Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Naomi, and if you're new here, I am passionate about painting and watercolor, and I love to share everything I'm learning along the way. So if that sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would stick around. For today's video, I have been asked a lot about some supplies that I would recommend for a beginner just starting out. I remember starting out my journey in watercolor, and I was frustrated a lot by some of the materials that I tried because at first, I didn't want to spend a lot of money to invest myself in something that I didn't know I was going to like. And I find that to be a common concern among people that are just starting. They're like, I want to get started, but I don't want to spend a ton of money. But the thing about it is, generally, if you start with better materials, your experience will be so much better. And then you will really know if you like it or not and want to continue. If you are using frustrating materials because they are of lower quality, then your experience is going to be a constant struggle and you'll be fighting your materials the whole time. And you may very well decide that watercolor is not for you when in fact it wasn't the medium at all, it was the materials the whole time. So I do have some recommendations. Bear in mind these are just my opinions based on my experience and there are as many opinions out there as there are artists. So please take this with a grain of salt. Just take what you like and disregard the rest politely and uh, let's get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is paper, and I'm just gonna do a brief overview of what I would recommend for a beginner starting out. There are so many types of paper out there and you will be tempted to buy the paper that is not as expensive and you will hear some people say that it's all right, but in my opinion, good paper makes all the difference and it is the one thing that you should invest in first. Again, this is just my opinion. Please take it or leave it, but I am an Arches girl. I'm not sponsored by Arches, but any kind of 100% cotton paper is what you want to start with. There are so many brands of 100% cotton paper, and I will link a few down below in the description. I also have a blog post that talks about all of these supplies as well, so there are links in there, and I will put more down below if you are interested in looking at them. But I'm going to recommend a cold press block if you are just starting out. And the reason for a block, the paper is glued all the way around the outside of the edge so that the whole entire thing will stay flat and it will not warp and buckle when you're using it. I have a video on how to deal with watercolor blocks, how to open one, how to start using it, and all of that, and so I will link that video also down below for you. But basically, it's frustration free because you don't have to tape anything, you don't have to get a board, you don't have to stretch paper, you just open it up and start painting. It is super easy. And so for starting out, I would recommend that even though it is a little bit more expensive. But you do have to bear in mind that, so this Arches block on Blix website sells for about $38 for 20 sheets, okay? You can also buy it as a pad of paper, which is less expensive. So this is a pad, and but it only has 12 sheets, and it's about $17. So if you would get two pads, that would give you 24 sheets for $34, if I did my math right, versus 20 sheets for $38. So yes, these are a little bit more expensive, but they're not like drastically more expensive, and they are a lot more convenient. So I would recommend 100% cotton paper. If you get loose pads, you know, that are just bound on one side, then you will also need to get some kind of board. And I just recommend these hardboard panels. They are basically like a clipboard. They're really inexpensive. Then you take off a sheet of paper and you just need to Put your paper down on the board and use some tape. I recommend painter's tape, not masking tape, because painter's tape can be removed easily. You tape it all around the outside so that your paper will not warp and buckle as you're working. So that's my recommendation for paper, is to get 100% cotton cold press paper. The next thing that you're going to need is paint, and I recommend a student grade brand to start with. Um, professional paint is, of course, where you want to eventually end up if you are investing yourself in this medium. But to start with, 
paper is the thing I would invest in the first, and then you can get by with a good set of student grade paint. I recommend Winsor and Newton's Cotman brand. Um, this particular set is called the Pocket Sketchers 12 half pan set. And for the paintings that I teach, I recommend very similar colors to this set. So if you plan to do some of the paintings that I will offer on this channel, I'm getting those going and starting. There are just a few up now. Um, then this might be a good set to begin with because with this set, you can do all kinds of mixes. In the next video that I put up, I'm going to do a swatch test of all these colors as well as some useful mixes that you can do. Um, bear in mind, my painting style is kind of eclectic. I do everything nature inspired. So I do botanicals, florals, wildlife, and landscapes. I do not really do urban scenes and I do not really do portraits, human portraits. If you did those, you might want other colors as well. But this set is a great one to start out with. When it comes, it will come in a box like this. And then when you open up the box, they will tell you the colors on the back, what they are. And Cotman is Winsor & Newton's student grade brand. They also have a professional line. So when you get it out of the box, you're going to have this brochure that tells you all of their different Cotman paints that you can buy. So that's kind of handy to have. And then inside it will all be really cute. Um, each pan will be individually wrapped and so you will just need to cut the wrapper off and then you've got these cute little pans. It does come with a travel brush inside. And there it is. Okay, and then you put the end on there and it's a tiny little travel brush. It might be like a size two or three. Um, I don't find these to be super useful to be honest. I usually just kind of put it aside. What you can do with it is you can use it to get the paint out of the pan and out onto your palette and mix it up there so that you're not digging into the pans with your good brushes, but I will go more into that later. So this is the palette that I would recommend. They do come in tube form as well. Winsor & Newton Cotman is just a great brand to start with in my opinion. Along with paint, this palette comes with a little mixing tray. It doesn't hold a lot because it's such a compact little palette, but it does hold three separate mixes if you want to use just that. Uh, but I do recommend if you're getting into this and want to have more space, some kind of ceramic uh, palette. And it, it can be just a dinner plate. It doesn't have to be a fancy thing like this, but they come in all different styles and shapes. I have a whole ton of different ones. These are the ones I tend to like the most and I got them on Amazon but you are welcome to look all around for palettes that you like. There are handmade ones on Etsy. There are a ton of them on Blick and Amazon, Jackson's Art Supply, almost anywhere that you look. I just recommend getting white ones so that you can see the true colors of your paint. And I recommend getting ceramic or porcelain because the paint will spread out better and you will see how diluted it is. Uh, on a plastic surface, the paint will tend to beat up and clump up, and then it's really hard to judge not only the color of your paint, but the, the consistency and the dilution of it. So plastic is really not my choice for a mixing surface. Something white, something ceramic or porcelain. For brushes to start out, um, I have a whole video on brushes and brush care. So I will link that down below as well, because again, it is a wide world of supplies out there. I recommend that you get a couple of round brushes to start with. Um, the Cotman the Winsor & Newton Cotman line of brushes is pretty decent quality I have found, and this is their student grade line. I recommend getting something in a large-ish and a small and a medium. So this set is the set number two, set number two, and it comes with a zero and a four and an eight. And that to me is a nice kind of range of sizes. So you can cover a lot of space with the eight, and the zero is tiny enough to do some really great detail work. And then the four is just kind of a nice small to medium size. So that's the, the set that I would recommend. You might also need a large-ish soft brush to do big loose washes like for skies because this largest number eight is still not going to give you enough um, brush area to do a big wash. So I would use a soft larger brush like this number 10 Princeton Neptune. 
and I will have that link down below. You can use anything like 10, 12, or 14, that kind of size. And I also recommend some kind of one inch or one and a half inch flat wash brush so that you can quickly wet down your whole paper with water if you are working wet on wet. So if you had these five brushes, I think you would be well set on your way. Along with brushes, you're going to need some kind of cloth or rag to dab off extra moisture. And paper towels work great. I use those all the time, but I've recently switched to cotton cloths because they are reusable. And so I just throw them in the washing machine. These are bar mop towels and they are cotton, 100% cotton. It's also helpful to have white ones because again, you can judge whether or not you've actually cleaned off your brush. If you dab the brush on here and you see any paint at all, then you know you still have to clean your brush better. So if you had a colored washcloth, it might be harder to tell that. Um, and I also use cotton handkerchiefs, and these are much thinner. And the reason I like these is because they're super absorbent, but I can actually wrap it around my fingertip and use it to really get into the corners when I'm cleaning out my palette, or I can use it to actually lift off paint like a paper towel. So again, it's reusable and washable, and I just have a ton of these in my studio. Then to rinse the paint off of your brushes, you'll need a water container. Honestly, you don't need to buy one. You can just get a yogurt container, a jar, anything that you have laying around your house. You will find fancy water buckets. Um, the handy thing about this is that this one, if you can tell, it has ridges inside on the bottom so that if you are rinsing out your brush, you can actually rub the bristles against the ridges and it knocks loose some of the pigment so that you can clean your brush a little better. Um, but that's not necessary. Although if you like that feature and you don't wanna pay for an entire water bucket, this one happens to be collapsible too, which is handy. What you can do is just get a jar. So I just have these mason jars. You can use a pickle jar, anything like that. And then I found these little handy things. They are called paint pucks. You can see they're made out of silicone. They're very gentle um, and they have a suction cup on the bottom. So what you do is you just stick that into the bottom of your jar like this. You just push it down and it sticks there. And then you can run your bristles over that when you're rinsing your brush in this water. And then you can just reuse some kind of jar that you have at home. And these paint pucks are like five bucks each or so. Um, and they come in different colors. And then you can just rinse off your bristles that, that way as well. So that's optional. Again, you can just use what you have. A water container can be anything. This is in my brush care video, but I'm gonna share it here as well to save the bristles on my brushes because I do like them to maintain their nice sharp point um, so that when I'm doing detail work it's really precise so I don't want those to get dull or blunt and so what I do to dig paint out of my paint pans is I use some cheap brushes these are by Crayola they're super sturdy and they come in these four sizes you actually get this pack of them uh, four brushes for about five dollars. They're just in the kids art supply section and I use the orange one and the pink one a lot for digging paint out of the pans because you can really dig in there and get it out. You can mix up all your paint and you're not using your good brushes to do that. And then I use the two bigger ones to clean out my palette because what I can do is I can just get them wet and I can really scrub into the corners and I'm not worried about damaging my bristles because these are so inexpensive and they're so sturdy. They've lasted for years and I use them really hard. So I recommend getting some good, inexpensive, but sturdy brushes for cleaning and for digging out paint. To moisten the paint in the pan to kind of wake it up and get it ready, you can just load up a brush with water and kind of drip it in there. Or you can get these little plastic pipettes and just drip some water on top. These come like in a pack of a hundred, which is way more than I need. So I share them with my daughter and she uses them for her play and stuff like that. Totally unnecessary, but fun as an option. Another tool that is optional, but really helpful is some kind of hair dryer or a heat tool. This one is not a hair dryer, although it looks like one. It's just a really hot craft tool and it heats up super hot. You don't want to put your hand under this. 
Um, so I keep it moving over my paper and I do it not too long. You don't want to scorch your paper. This will help you dry your paintings in between and it's just handy. If you have a hair dryer, that will work just fine as well. Now, if you just want the bare minimum and you're looking for an easy little kit to put together that doesn't use a lot of supplies, it's just the bare minimum of what you need, this is what I would consider to be like my minimalist beginner's watercolor kit. And it is a block of cold press 100% cotton paper. It doesn't need to be this size. It can be any size. They come in five by seven, whatever you want. Um, a block of paper, this little palette, this set of brushes and a one inch brush. If all you had was this, that would be just enough to get you started and it would be a great kit for a beginner. Also would make a great gift for somebody looking to get into watercolor. Again, these are simply the supplies that I would choose if I were starting out. As with anything on the internet, I recommend that you take what is helpful to you and just disregard the rest. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have a helpful tip for beginners or if something resonated with you because we are all learners no matter how long we've been painting. Like I said, in the next video, I'll be swatching this little palette and showing you some useful mixes that you can make with these colors. So I'd love it if you would join me over there. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if it was helpful to you and consider subscribing. It helps you to see more content like this and it helps my channel to keep growing. Thanks again so much and I hope to see you in the next video.